Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Thanks be to God that we have arrived. Thanks be to God that we have arrived at our new property and at the threshold of Great Lent. Which is thanks be to God. It's incredible. Multiple times over our 21 years as a congregation, we've moved around, wandering the desert for a permanent home. It hasn't really been rough going, but in the beginning it was pretty tough. Setting up and breaking down at Mason Schools, Food and Nutrition Building, we did church in an RV garage, the Trailside Shopping Center, not to mention the flooding from the sewer there. Our big building on Redmont, uh, which we were just in last week. And today we witnessed the end of our surgeoning around the East Valley. Thanks be to God for all that he's given us. 15 acres. This incredibly beautiful church, which is cozy. <laughs> And more importantly, each other. More importantly, each other. After all the things we can say about God's great gifts to us, the property, the land, like this, I mean, the beauty, the air conditions working, like all this stuff, everything, the price we did not pay, and all of that, the greatest grace of God is that he's given us each other. Because we were just fine in Redmont. We were just fine in Mesa School Nutrition Bill. Just fine. I mean, make no mistake. But it is really nice to be here. We have occupied ourselves with prayer, asking for a permanent property. We occupied ourselves with the acquisition and preparation of the property. We've occupied ourselves with the move to get here. And there is still <coughs> so much to do, but we've made it. Just thinking of God's provision for us. It's incredible. And while it's certainly true that we have much work to do here in our new ranch, it's also true we have much work to do in our spiritual life. So we're not only on the, like, thanks be to God that we've arrived at the new property, we've arrived at Great Lent. Right at the same time. Much work to do in our spiritual life, both as individuals and then as a community. So now, by the grace of God, we begin to live a new life. Let us occupy ourselves with watchfulness, repentance, and prayer of the heart. And don't be resentful when you hear the call to come to confession. And don't be scared. And don't let anything hold you back. Today, godlessness prevails and virtue has been forgotten. And there seems to be nowhere to go. But if we're honest, it's just us that lack the spiritual strength to do what we need to do. Just, there may be godlessness prevailing, but our real problem is our own hearts. The world will just take care of itself. So the problem is not out there. The problem is in here. So stepping in to help our hearts, the church gives us great Lent to get us back to normal. And Jesus says in his divine and sacred gospel, He who believes in me, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Whoever of us then wants the living water of the Holy Spirit to well up within themselves, avail yourself of fasting and prayer and the services and the work to acquire the prayer of the heart. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy. And make note that there's a lot of work to do, to do that. It will not just be simple or easy. It will take a lot of work. And mostly because our hearts are imprudent and unprepared and filthy. And our Lord Jesus Christ, the heavenly king, calls us to prepare and purify our hearts. The prophet David said this, my heart is ready. I sing and chant in my glory. So his heart was ready. For our hearts and souls, the doctor has prescribed medicine that works perfectly. The medicine he's prescribed is perfect. The healing of the heart consists of prayer and fasting and almsgiving. And add to, the Lent, to that the Lenten services and confession, the other spiritual disciplines that draw us closer to Christ. We still have so much work to do. 
But as St. Paul says, salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. That's what we heard this morning. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. Let us then cast off the works of darkness. Put on the armor of light, St. Paul goes on to say. Let's conduct ourselves becomingly as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, debauchery, licentiousness, or quarreling or jealousy. The night is far gone, and by the grace of God, we have arrived. So let us embrace the fast, and let us embrace each other. Let us embrace each other. We'll sing at Forgiveness Vespers this morning, right after liturgy. Let us begin the season of fasting with rejoicing. So often, that's the church has to tell us to do that, because we're like, Lent. The church says, don't enter like that. Enter with rejoicing. <coughs> Give yourselves to spiritual strife. This is what we'll say. Give yourselves to spiritual strife, purifying soul and body, fasting from passions as we fast from foods, faring on the virtues of the Spirit, which, if we continue to long for, we shall all be worthy to behold the most solemn passion of Christ and the holy Passover, rejoicing with spiritual truth. I simply cannot wait to hear the bells go off in the I can't wait. 50 days, I have to wait, but 51 days or something. But I can't wait. You, you may know that the first service we did in here at Vespers, I don't know, five weeks ago or something, a long, long time ago, that Wayne Decker's brother, Chris, who lives in a house right there, texted me about the bells going off. I may have sent this in an email, I don't know. But he could hear them because his house is right there, and he just said, more life, you know, more bells, like more. He texted me this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Your brother did, Chris. Incredible. I told him, I said, may the Lord grant you the generosity. That you granted us. Because from the beginning, he was in our corner. So let us begin the fast with joy. This is not only the day the Lord has made, this is the fasting season the Lord has made. You know? <laughs> Watching the whole process of receiving this property has me reflecting on God giving us this miracle. There have been many difficulties. We've done a lot of hard work, all the necessary arrangements. We have done that. God gave us the property, but then we did all the necessary arrangements, all the preparation, all the financing, the tree trimming, and it goes, you know, working on the playground, it goes on cleaning. It goes on and on and on, and there's work to do still. But without the grace of God, nothing comes together. Without the grace of God, nothing comes together. You can do all the work you want, but without the grace of God, it's just a bunch of work. And there's still so much to do, so we're asking for God's grace to continue with us. And obviously we have a building project before us at some point. We'll get to that at some point soon. But everything we see shows us all the more clearly how the Lord loves us, how God cares for us, and he cares, and he cared for the work that we do to get here. <coughs> Great Lent begins tomorrow. Let us enter the fast with joy. Joy for the property, joy for the incredible sound of our choir in this beautiful church. It's just fantastic. We're just shaking our heads and the altar. Wow. Joy for our community. Joy for what we have become and what we're becoming as a community. And there's a lot of work to do on that. And just vision. You know, we worked so hard to get here. Now it's now. What, what does the Lord have for us now? It's the next step. Let us focus on today mutual <coughs> reconciliation. Forgiving those who wrong us. So maybe not all of you can stay right after liturgy for forgiveness vespers, but I hope that you will. I hope that you will, even just for the first part or the first part of the forgiving part or something. Because I think next to Pascha, Actually, Father Michael Habib said this in Twin Falls last week. I'm just taking it from him. <coughs> he said that it's a debate on which service is more important. 
forgiveness vespers is possible. I wouldn't say that strongly. I'd say forgiveness vespers is probably the second most important service that we give. I mean, that's an amazing thing to say, given all the beauty of our services. Let us focus ourselves on mutual reconciliation. We're going to have to be patient with each other. Just to figure out how we're going to do blessed bread in a few minutes, have some patience. We don't know what we're going to do. One of you is probably going to hold the bowl. Michaela, we hold the bowl. <laughs> Michaela's going to hold the bowl of blessed bread over here. And that one I think we'll just put right there and see if it works. So we'll get to that in the announcement. Repentance begins by looking at our own faults and seeing that we have the problem. The problem is not someone else or out there. We have the problem. So let's forgive those that have wronged us. Let's not become fixated on politics, arguments, gossip, or obsessing over the faults of others. The reading said, keep the fast. Keep the fast. The weak ones are going to keep the fast, and if someone doesn't keep the fast, it's not for anybody to judge that person for not keeping the fast. That's what's said right before we start the fast. Keep the fast. And if someone else does it, it's none of your business. Please don't post it on Facebook so we don't have to worry about your chicken dinners. But fast, embrace the fast. And then those that aren't, those of us who are embracing the fast or sitting next to someone who's not, it's just none of our business. It actually says that in the reading today. That's for God to deal with. But if you want to grow in your spiritual life, fasting and prayer and almsgiving, the Lenten services and confession. That's the medicine. That's the recipe. That's the prescription. Not becoming fixated on politics and having arguments and gossip. Let us not know every detail of everything going on. Let us embrace each other. So I end the sermon by asking for your forgiveness. For any offense I've caused you, in word or deed, in my knowledge, in doing it on purpose or in ignorance, doing it accidentally and not knowing, and know that I offer you my forgiveness and my love. And I pray for all of you. I pray for all of you this morning as we do it every liturgy. Praying that God will forgive all of us in this age and the age to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 